Her supporters called it her biggest achievement. Others called it her terrible legacy. Margaret Thatcher's battle with the miners was a defining moment not only in British industrial relations, but also in British history. 1984, Great Britain. Many believed the miners were responsible for bringing down Ted Heath in 1974. Stop the strikes and start the work. And the trades union movement alongside Margaret Thatcher is also credited with bringing down Jim Callaghan several years later in what was known as the winter of discontent. What sort of government is it which sees its authority pass to strike committees? Just a year into Mrs Thatcher's premiership, the leader of the National Union of Miners, Arthur Scargill, made it clear he wanted her to go too. The Tories have never forgotten the defeat inflicted in 1972 and in 1974. But equally, <coughs> neither of the miners forgotten the lessons of 1972 and 1974. He had essentially declared war on the Prime Minister and she responded in exactly the same way she did in the Falklands. The government began closing state-owned coal pits that weren't making any profits and Mrs Thatcher appointed Norman Tebbit as Employment Secretary. He immediately went about creating legislation to limit the legal protection the unions had. One such measure forced them to ballot workers before calling a strike. I will never ever be a party to Tory party legislation which seeks to castrate and mutilate this trade union movement and nobody in the end, anywhere or anywhere else can be a party to that kind of legislation. Margaret Thatcher saw inefficient industry and outdated practices in the mining world, but of course closing mines meant thousands would lose their jobs, and in 1984, it all came to a head. Well, I think the unions are obviously one body where a fanatical, tiny fanatical minority can and seem to be able to take over a whole union and then say that they represent the whole union. Arthur Scargill called a strike without holding a national ballot. There were clashes on picket lines between miners and police as the government fought tooth and nail to keep as many of the mines open as possible. Some miners tried to get into work, but many were put off because of the violence. I was intending to go to work today, but it's either a brave man or an idiot that will go through that. I won't be back. Not when it's like this. Yeah. I can't be expected to, to go through that. What we have seen in the past few weeks is not picketing at all. No. No. It is an attempt by force to prevent others from doing what they have a right to do. It dragged on and on, but eventually mine workers in Nottinghamshire dealt Scargill a significant blow. They would have supported a strike with a ballot, but because there wasn't one, they all decided to continue working. Yes, we want to work, and we're in a bit of a talk in the canteen and tomorrow we want to come to work and to have it sorted out. The National Union of Mine Workers shall organise a return to work on Tuesday. We go back together and as far as we're concerned, this union fights to retain pits, jobs and communities. So the unions were defeated, Arthur Scargill's reputation was severely weakened but thousands lost their jobs. Margaret Thatcher had won. It was a battle that defined her early years in power and left a legacy that still divides millions to this day.